Welcome to the Firewater Review, a weekly podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On this week's episode, we will be reviewing Bellamy's Nine Year, a store pick from Party Source. I'm your host, Seth Brown. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Aaron Cave. It's just the two of us, my man. How are you? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing swell. Doing swell. You sound good, too, man. You got a new computer. Yeah, yeah. New computer. Hopefully, I'm a little bit louder than I usually am. Um, So, yeah. You got a new computer, too. I did. Hence the week off. (laughs) Yes. Uh, And... Oddly enough, we bought our computers on the same day, not even knowing. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, that was kind of weird. It was, and we were supposed to record that night, which I guess by the time this comes out will have been two or three weeks ago. And, yeah, we were supposed to record that night with a guest, and I had to reset up everything that I do for the show, and it just wasn't going to happen. So, here we are. A week later, and it's just you and I. Yep. Uh, and a bourbon. And a bourbon. Yes, our, our guests had to push it back an additional week. So um, just me and you and uh, a little bell of meat tonight. Yes. And we were chatting just before I hit record here. I I personally have not had a whole lot of Bellamede. I've had the traditional bourbon from them, and I mentioned to you that I have the Bellamede nine-year-old uh, sherry bourbon, which I've enjoyed. There's, like I said before, uh, we started recording. I've got about four pours left, and uh, the proof is in the liquid that it is non-chill filtered because it's getting a bit cloudy. But this, what you sent me, is not cloudy. It is crystal clear. Yeah, and uh, that, this was a kind of a neat pick. You know, it's nine years, um, a hundred and nine point seven proof. It, uh, I love it when you're buying a uh, single barrel barrel selection product, and they actually take the time to handwrite everything mm-hmm. on the. Uh, on the bottle because you know it's got the barrel number it's got the date it w- was barreled what number of bottle it is from that barrel it's got your proof um it's it's just kind of nice little touch you know, a lot of places a lot of distilleries do it but i always enjoy seeing you know the extra effort put in yeah absolutely this makes it feel so much more personal yeah that's what I like about the cask drink stuff, too. We were talking about the E.H. Taylor barrel barrel proof, and they used to handwrite the stuff on the tube and the bottle. Yeah. But they don't do that anymore. Yeah, they got a little lax with the tube, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's, it's not so much bottle, of a sweet though. tube anymore. Yeah. But yeah, it is it's still on the bottle. But yeah, this is... Uh, this is good, man. I appreciate you sending me the sample, too. Yeah, yeah. I've... I've you know, a lot of people look over Bellamede and um, or they just don't know much about it. It's uh, it's a it's a really good pour, and I've always enjoyed it. I, and I, I like their single barrels because you know they are cast strength, they are um, uh, non chill filtered, and uh, they're they're honestly they're sourced from the same place that Old Scout and a lot of other uh, players are sourcing from MGP. Mm-hmm. So you're getting you know you're getting quality liquid, and it's. Uh, I don't want to say I would compare it to Old Scout because MGP does do a lot of different mash bills. But I do know that Old Scout does do a little bit of a higher rye mash bill. And I know Bellamy does also a higher, higher rye mash bill. So um, it, I would say they are comparable but um i've always enjoyed the bellamede uh, single barrels i think they've always come out pretty well I, I think they might be a little overpriced and that's why some people kind of shy away from it but um i think this bottle was almost sixty dollars and you look at the old scout single barrel is usually about 50 ish. Yeah. So give or take where you're buying it at. So they're a little bit cheaper and a little bit better, but this is still a great quality pour for not, 
not you're not really breaking the bank um because it's it's aged nine years right there in the tag it tells you nine years and uh it's cash strength so yeah uh, you're not seeing age stated stated stuff much anymore and cash strength's always a plus yeah, it is. And uh, you mentioned the old Scout line. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they cut out their barrel program. Is it still still gone? Uh, as I know, it is still gone. But I, I heard that it was just going to be like a year. They were cutting it just to revamp everything, make sure they got everything good. And they're supposed to reopen it. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, it's possible, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, because most of theirs were nine and ten years, mm-hmm. which, you know, the Bellamede is typically around nine years. But uh, we were talking about proof, too, before the show. And you had mentioned uh, when I'd said that I hadn't had a whole lot of uh, Bellamede products, how most of their, their picks and their cask strength stuff typically are lower proof. But you compare that to, to Old Scout, and those some of those can get on up there in proof. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting to to know that they do come from the same source when you think about that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Old Scout's really interesting because, uh, you know, I've had some really high proofs from there, you know, in the 120s. And I've actually had a bottle that was uh, a barrel strength at 86 proof. What? Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, a pick by uh, Ed Bly out of uh, Cork and Bottle, and uh, probably one of the top bourbons I've ever had. And for me to say that for such a uh, low proof bourbon is pretty pretty interesting because I mean it had so much flavor and depth to it, and it, it was it was weird, man, especially for an eighty six proof uh, barrel strength product. But yeah, I mean that's barely bourbon at that point. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of one that really kind of threw me through a loop, or you know, just kind of had you really got you thinking, like, oh wow. But uh, <laughs> yeah, these are usually usually I think are about somewhere between 104 and 115 proof. Um, I I did say I had a sample from uh, from uh, Dad's Drinking Bourbon. They sent me uh, a sample of a. Uh, single barrel Bellamy that was uh, like 121 proof, I think. So um, they can get up there too. I, I, I definitely recommend anyone that's interested in the, their product to go to the website and actually look at the Bellamy website because they got so much really cool like historical information it's it would take me all night to go through it also i'm not going to but um uh, charles nelson was the original founder of the distillery and that was back in the 1800s and he distilled the uh Bellamy brand was distilled between uh, 1878 and uh, 1909. And I, 1909 is when uh, Tennessee adopted the statewide prohibition. And so that's why they stopped distilling then. So pretty much Bellamy went away after that, up until 2006, when Charles Nelson's great, great, great grandchildren, Charlie and Andy, decided to uh, uh, guess uh, resurrect yes resurrect that's what I'm looking for Res- resurrect their great great grandfather's bourbon and they started out like any true craft distillery does they uh, you know started started distilling but knowing their product would not be out anytime soon they hit up MGP for a little uh of their juice to get some uh, quality bourbon out on the markets and letting people know that, Hey, this is not our bourbon. This is sourced. Ours will be here in, you know, six, seven, eight years. But uh, up until then, this is what we got. And uh, before I hit the single barrel, their uh, small batch is actually pretty, a pretty interesting small batch. I don't know if you've ever read up on the small batch, but it's a blend of only four barrels. And so they blend four barrels with two different high rye mash bills and they're aged somewhere between six and eight years. And they actually do proof that down to uh, 90.4 proof, but uh, still non-chill filtered. Yeah. And then the uh, single barrel is usually a nine to 10 year single barrel. 
and it goes through like a nice tasting panel of all their tasting experts to be uh, deemed good for a single barrel. Um, so what they're kind of looking for is in their single barrel bourbons is uh, – something that really stands out uh you know has just different characteristics you know has a great balance great depth uh very complex and so they don't cut it with anything they just take it from the barrel to the bottle and so you're tasting what the panel of their expert tasters taste so um and that's you know we've talked on this uh, subject on a couple shows but store picks that's what happens with every store pick you know it's you're picking a single barrel that's been deemed worthy for their program so but yeah i think that i thought that was kind of cool that you know they're usually somewhere between nine and ten um and they always say it on the neck tag if you're buying a single barrel say nine years or ten years Mm -hmm. So another interesting note is they uh, did release their first distillates. Uh, I think it was this year. This year, this past year, it was their uh, their f- first uh, bourbon that was distilled by the Nelson Brothers. And that was, it's not called Bellamy because that's their sourced. So it's called Nelson's 108 Tennessee Whiskey. And uh, 108 stands for, I think, the proof. Hmm. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I I think it was, I want to say, like a distillery uh, release only for a while i i haven't seen it anywhere but uh i don't have any bellamy products up in ohio but uh i haven't seen it in like any of my trips to kentucky or anything like that but uh bellamy also they're just not only their small batch and their single barrel as you said you had the sherry cask Mm -hmm. and they also have a cognac cask and then they uh, have a different one what is it uh I don't know. They got a, uh, another one that they finish and something else. Hmm. I think I've only seen, I've seen the cognac, and as you mentioned, I have the sherry. Yeah. That's all I've ever seen. And, and even the cognac, I haven't seen that much of. I see, It seems like I saw it once down in Florida or something. Yeah. But the sherry cask, I've seen a few different places. Yeah, I didn't know that about their their own distill. I mean, I knew they were distilling their own stuff, but I didn't know that they had released anything. And it's yes. kind of like Smooth Ambler, you know, the, the source stuff is Smooth Ambler Old Scout because they scouted for the bourbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then their own stuff is just Smooth Ambler. There's no Old Scout. Like they had the yearling. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you ever have any of that? Uh, I did not have any of the yearling. But, you know, I wonder what what these, you know, like the, the Smooth Ambler guys and the, the Bellamede guys, if once they start distilling, there's, I mean, this would be a question for them, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what are they looking for? Are they looking to, especially with Smooth Ambler, I guess more so than Bellamede, but, you know, are they looking to try to match that flavor profile? Or are they just trying to do something completely on their own while keeping the source stuff? Uh you know, it seems like yeah. that's what Bellamy is trying to do. Mm-hmm. So this is interesting. The Bellum or the Nelson 108 is um, it's 108 because that it's that's how long it's been. It's been 108 years since uh, they closed and reopened, and then they also only for this blend they only used 108 barrels to produce this uh this is the limited edition first uh 108 tennessee whiskey it's their limited edition one i got you and only used 108 barrels so that's kind of neat and then let's look at their single barrel real quick that's the nice thing about having a new computer you can just put up all (laughs) kinds of stuff while you're while you're chatting you know so uh yeah this is this good stuff not having to frantically and I guess worriedly close Skype while you're yeah. on, the, on the iPad. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The other single barrel's not telling me much. It says the exact same stuff. So gotcha. All right. Yeah. So 108 years ago. Cool. That's crazy. It's like the yeah. last time the Cubs won the World Series until last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, that's good stuff. Yeah, I knew the 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 label 
was you know from way back that it had been mm-hmm. around long ago but i didn't realize that it there was you know that much of a of a gap between their their products but yeah i knew it had come back on the market relatively uh not long ago but uh yeah i didn't didn't realize it had gone away as long yeah yeah as far back as what it had so that's cool good info man good info all right well history's done so there's only one more thing to do taste it yep let's do it all right when we return we'll share notes Welcome back, everybody. In the extremely long break, we were sipping on some Bellamede Nine Year Party Source Barrel Pick. Per usual format, I will let Mr. Cave kick it off and I'll bring up the rear. Take it away, sir. All right. So, yeah, this is, this is a great pour. Um, it's a really great drinking proof, too, because 109, it's like right in the middle. You know, it's, it's got that great heat and uh, it still uh, still has a really good uh, mouthfeel to it. It's not too thin, not too th- heavy, but uh, it's just uh, I love the proof on it. And on the nose, it's it just reminds me of walking into a bakery. It's got all kinds of just spices and nuts. And uh, you can really pick up like um, nice hints of like almost like buttery biscuits. But I get a lot of cinnamon and clove. There's some orange zest in there, a little bit of cherry, uh, caramel corn. I even get uh, hints of peanuts and just uh, some nice, uh, good uh, tobacco notes. And uh, on the palate, it's full body. It's rich. It's real creamy. There's a lot of uh, oak and spice to it. Um, I get a lot of cinnamon, uh, raisins, uh, get some cherries, uh, big hints of toffee, maple syrup. get a little bit of uh, like a, almost like a smoky oak, like a charred oak, I guess. Let's get the tobacco, a little bit of leather, and uh, yeah, I, pick, I still pick up some some kind of uh, citrus note. I, I can't really place my finger on it. I want to say tangerine, but I'm not sure if that's it or not. But uh, and on the finish, it's good, good long finish. Not super long, but I get a lot of cinnamon, cherries, uh, oaks, oak, oak, not oaks. <laughs> white oak yeah uh, yeah you know but but uh and a little bit of vanilla um yeah it's um this is it's a good pour it, i really dig it um i'm gonna give it an 89 out of 100 sweet i like it man good score yeah good score yeah i would agree with a lot of that man it uh, like i said it the uh, when I first looked at this and first poured it, I had to take a double take at the proof. I just, you know, I I could probably go through all of mine, and I don't know that I have a barrel proof. Well, the the maker's mark cast strength that's kind of low. It's on the lower end too. That that might be some of the lowest cask strength that I think I have that yeah. I'm that I'm aware of. But not that it's a bad thing. Like I said, it's it's a good drinking cask strength. Yeah, cool. 89 dig it all right so for me i i like the nose i thought it was just a great bourbon nose it just you know it hits all of those those bourbon notes that you hear about you get the oak the oak isn't overpowering though uh you get some uh i was getting some nice finer leather some clove nutmeg uh, a little bit of allspice there's uh, some cinnamon and the caramel uh, the, the cinnamon the caramel to me play well throughout the whole the whole pour mm-hmm. uh from the from the nose all the way to the finish um but they just that just jive really well on this one uh there's a small pinch of tobacco here just a just a great nose like i said just a good traditional bourbon nose in my opinion uh the palate i i like the palate it was a good mouth fill uh, a little little creamy um but like you said it's not not too thin not too thick it's just right there kind of in the middle uh really good balance of the sweet and spice going on again between the cinnamon and uh, uh caramel i'm getting a little bit of black pepper there uh hints of vanilla 
uh, for the for the sweeter flavor. And uh, with a good chew, I was getting a little bit more red pepper spice that that comes in there. Uh, just a really well balanced bourbon, I thought. Uh, again, with that that sweet and spice going on, the finish was long. Had a nice rich dark chocolate uh, that I was picking up on it. A uh, little toffee, the cinnamon, uh, the a little hint of vanilla and caramel again. A uh, little bit of oak and just just a good enjoyable pour i mean it wasn't anything crazy mind-blowing but you know this is a cask strength bourbon that i could sit down and drink every day and oh yeah be, definitely be perfectly happy with it uh, i gave it an 88 88 yep 88.5 easy math Woo-hoo! we don't do hard math here no way Awesome. Yeah, this is, it's a good pour. It's, yeah, it's, I honestly, 60 bucks. I, I paid up all day for this. It's aged nine years. It's usually somewhere close to 108 proof. Yeah, I'd pay probably 60 bucks all day for this. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think now, though, the old Forrester that we did on the show uh, a few shows ago with, uh, oh, yeah. with Zeke and John from Dad's Dream yeah, Bourbon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's 60 bucks. Yeah. You know, both. I mean, the Statesman is what, 50, 50, 55, something like that? Yeah, I think Statesman's 50, I think 55, and yeah, the uh, Prohibition 60. So, yeah. And you had to, not, that's not age stated. So, true. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's 115 proof, but some of these you might be able to hit 115 proof where these are always going to be nine or 10 years. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, good, sixty. Good point. Yeah, sixty bucks is not not a bad price to spend on on a uh, on a good bourbon. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at it, uh, the old Scout. I mean, some of those ten years now from the old Scout and the the nine to ten years, especially on the secondary market, some of those things have jumped way up. Oh yeah, just because you can't get them anymore. But if you can find them on a shelf, they're usually between forty and fifty. You know, as you mentioned, it's sourced from the same place uh but yeah i mean I, this is a fair price if you ask me 60 bucks all day baby all day all day yeah excellent well yeah thanks again for sharing this one with me yes uh i think i'll have a couple other ones coming up that uh, maybe i'll send multiple samples and we can do a bellamied face-off a Bellamede Showdown. Showdown. Yeah. Because uh, Depths actually has a really good uh, Bellamede pick that I picked up a while ago, but I think they still might have it. I don't I'd think I've ever check. seen uh, a Bellamede pick down here that I'm aware of. You just don't, you know, you don't see or hear them talk about it that much. Yeah. I Like I said, I think they're overlooked quite a bit. It's just, you know, uh, they're, I don't want to say uh, new to the market because they, they've been around for, I, I want to say since at least 2012, but there's just, they, they're limited on their states that they're, sh- you know, distributing to. So I think that has uh, another, that's another part in the game. You know, if you don't have the product to send to a large amount of states right and your name's not out there so yeah well and i think that's what old scout did really well was they they had so many picks floating around out there yeah and their their products were on the shelf in a lot of places i mean they really only had two two products but then you know several stores were doing the picks and they just had a lot of shelf time to get that name out there yeah so i don't know maybe bellamy will up the game a little bit well cool man one one thing one of the uh one of the samples that you sent me i want to do a show on is the peerless yes yes definitely looking forward to doing that and well you know maybe you might get a bottle out of it because i'm i might i'm gonna have to be taking a trip to kentucky sometime so pick up your lottery winnings yes yeah yeah <laughs> i uh, hit pretty big in the lottery this pa- past couple months so uh, have to go down and pick those up so i could swing over to cork and i think ed was holding me uh, a couple so excellent man yeah you yeah. don't know how hard it is for me not to drink that sample that you sent me i'll drink it i'll send you another one it's it's good 
it's yeah yeah drink it and i'll send you another one because it's uh I, I tell you, it's one that I hated that I liked so much just because <laughs> it's so expensive. But and it, for a two year rye, I I never thought I'd spend a hundred and whatever ten dollars on a two year rye. Yeah. But uh, now I'm talking multiple bottles. So right, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's how I've justified me paying for, you know, a handful of bottles this fall because I, you know, we were talking for the show. I just haven't hunted. I don't really hunt anymore. I don't stop at multiple stores that I'd never go into just to see if they by chance have anything. I just don't do that anymore. Frankly, I don't have time to do that anymore. But, Mm -hmm. you know, one of my stores closed and I, I, pretty sure i've fallen out of the graces of my other one uh to some extent at least anyway so i you know as far as the fall releases go i just assumed that i would probably not get anything this fall which was fine with me because you know like i mentioned before we started recording just like my holiday shopping i you know bought booze online so i I bought a, a straight from the barrel and then the the peerless, you know, you you spend three hundred bucks or so on a couple bottles. You would have spent that on two bottles anyway, if not yeah. one in some cases. Mm-hmm. And I I know that I will be perfectly happy with those two bottles. Yep, amen to that. <laughs> All right, man. What else? I don't know. Next week we're hopefully going to be having some guests on and doing doing a little battle i think yeah i'm little, looking looking forward to that one man do i talk about that let, let them know what's, yeah. what's gonna happen yeah well, might as well yeah yeah a little e.h taylor barrel proof versus elijah cray barrel proof and these are probably two of aside from four roses cask strengths are probably two of my favorites i, I would say they were my original favorites as yeah. far as cast strength goes. Uh, but these two that we're going to be reviewing are are stellar. It's been a while since I've opened that E.H. Taylor. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to getting back into that one. Uh, the Elijah Craig is the most re, uh, recent release of their barrel proof and it is fantastic you know i I don't know what they're doing differently this year but i feel like the last two have been spot on yeah yeah they've been Uh, one yeah the 127 and the 124 yeah and they've both been yeah really good yeah and i mean not that the old ones weren't good but there were a couple in there and i was like eh, it's all right uh but yeah these last two were just been money yeah i'm I'm with you there's a store that uh, just opened by me, a smaller one, that still has one of those Elijah Craig barrel proofs sitting on the shelf. Huh. You should probably go pick that up. I probably should. That's where I got my other one from. It's like, look, it's just so lonely. You need to go with your brother and yeah. sit, on the, sit on my shelf. Might have to do that. All right, cool. I was going to mention uh, you just received a stellar order from my friend Chris Williams. I did, yes. Do you want uh, to talk about that? Well, yeah, Chris was just nice enough. He's such a great guy. I love him. <laughs> uh, he just, uh, yeah, sent me uh, some of the Glen Karen coasters with the Firewater Review logo on it. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Chris, man. You guys got to head over uh, to Roundtable Woodworks, check it out. Uh, he's doing some awesome stuff. And, uh, you know, I. Who knows if this show is going to come out in November, but if it does, there is a little uh, contest going on between myself and Steve Akeley. Um, we're pitting our uh, products that we've uh, had Chris produce for us against each other. Mine is the Bourbon Cave Barrel Tray. I think that's what he's calling it. I don't know. Something yeah. like that. And the Steve Akeley, the shadow box with the bar across. So mine's a serving tray. His is a wall hanging shadow box with a bar. Um, so yeah, whoever sells the most, I think Chris is going to donate to Toys for Tots for that city. So that's a, uh, that's yeah. an excellent contest. Yeah. So head over, uh, pick yourself up a, uh, a barrel tray or a Steve Akeley, uh, preferably a barrel tray, but you know, um, <laughs> he's doing some great stuff. So yeah, that's cool. That's cool. 
Yeah, and they're both great products. They really are. I I, I kind of laughed when he came up. He and Steve came up with the Steve Akeley because it it is one of his typical shadow boxes that hold the bottles. Mm-hmm. And the bar that you were mentioning was because Steve was you know afraid that the bottle was going to fall out. Oh, so yeah. he had he had uh, Chris add the bar across it just so it wouldn't fall out. So I thought that was that was kind of funny. That's very Steve like. But yeah, the the serving tray is is pretty dang awesome. I'm gonna have to get one of those. Yeah, I, I dude, I I love it. And uh, my thing is, uh, when I have tastings, have people over, I do a lot of food pairings with the bourbon, so different cheeses and chocolates and stuff like that. And it's perfect to put, you know, a couple of nice pieces of cheese on it, some different chocolates, uh, you know, crackers and whatnot, and just send it out. And people are like, oh, man, that's that's a barrel head. That's pretty cool. And you're like, yeah. So <laughs> it is pretty cool. That is. That's pretty awesome. Well, cool. Yeah. Check those out. And if you want to, I mean, they make great gifts. Great yeah. gifts. I mean, we're getting into the holiday season too. So, tis the season. Yep. I mean, really, that's a contest that nobody loses in because you're getting a good product if you order either one of them. And, you know, you're helping Chris out, get his name out there, and the proceeds goes, goes toward, go toward, yeah, something like that. Whatever. You know what I mean. Toys for Tots. So yes. There's there's not a loser in that bunch. Excellent contest. I dig it, man. I dig it. What else? Anything? I think that's it. I don't, I don't think I got anything else. Yep. Yeah, I'm on empty. I got nothing. Where can folks find you? All right. So you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Bourbon Cave, right for the Sons of Winston Churchill. Also writes Single Barrel High Proof bourbons for the uh, bourbon zeppelin and you can always find me here on the firewater review and uh, i believe that's it am i forgetting anything uh i don't think so you're gonna have to make a list man i know you're a popular dude uh, I'm, just, I'm too busy that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> i am seth p brown on instagram and occasionally on twitter uh, i don't even know why i say that really because i'm not uh <laughs> Uh, you can always find me on this show. You can find me also on the Sons of Winston Churchill, which is another shout out to Hassie. We should uh, should be coming up soon. The Around the Whiskey World in Seven Days, that uh, series should be coming up. It's a different uh, distillery every day of the week. And Aaron has uh, a piece that's going into that. I have one. And uh, Monty. Monty. And, uh, there's a few other. Who am I forgetting? Uh, there's a few other. Um uh, I'm probably the reason it's not out yet. I talking about being a busy dude. It, yeah, yeah. I just sent him my stuff like two days ago, so I, I felt horrible. I told him I was like, "Oh man, I got so much stuff going on with you know, the new sh- new job shift and you know, Isaac's birthday was yesterday, and just you know, all getting ready for all that and." Plus the distillery I went to, I couldn't get in till the 27th. And I was like, oh man, that's really kind of pushing it. And <laughs> so, but he was understanding. Yeah, that's cool. I don't feel so bad. Usually I'm the yeah. late one and I, I, which I was, I was still a couple of days late, but that makes me feel better. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. Misery loss company. <laughs> that's uh, right. Yeah. You can find uh, son of Winston Churchill on Instagram at son of Winston Churchill, and you can find them online at sow.blogspot i'm sorry sow churchill.blogspot.com i was getting ahead of myself there um you can find this show in itunes google play and stitcher you can find all of the abv network shows on abvnetwork.com and in those other channels as well and you can find the show on youtube too audio only no video and i think that's it i think that's it we dig your reviews too, man. Leave some feedback, be it on Instagram through uh, either Aaron or myself or the Firewater Review at Firewater Review on Instagram, by the way. Uh, let us know what you want to have us review. We got some great yeah. feedback from, from folks on the, the giveaway that we did, which we'll have to do another one of those soon. Which this was one that was on there. Yes. Someone requested a Bellamy, so yep. there we go. And uh, we've got a few more coming up that were requested. And uh, hey, if you ever want to be on the show, just reach out to us. 
there's no uh you know no criteria for anyone to be on so guys want to be on and hang out and talk that's what we do we're not scary no we just drink bourbon and we talk that's it but yeah we'd love to have you i would love to hear what you want to review too so that's it man until next week please drink responsibly and cheers later Water Review is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers.